Hello everybody! A few weeks ago I made a fold-up work table for the X-Carve CNC machine that Inventables was sending me. Well since then I've received the machine and I've already assembled it and got it up and running and it worked on the first try. So what I'd like to do today is do a follow-up and show you a little bit about the machine and how I mounted the X-Carve onto the table and how it folds up and also we'll do a quick and easy project to test it out. So follow me! Well here's the X-Carve mounted onto my fold-up work table. But before I show you how it folds up, let me give you a quick tour of the machine. The X-Carve has fewer parts than the previous version, so it was quicker and easier to put it together. I'd say it took me about 6 to 7 hours. This is the 1000 millimeter version, so it has a cutting area of about 31 by 31 inches. It does come in a smaller 500 millimeter version, but if you're able to, I would recommend going with the larger version so you can do bigger projects. It has a really sleek look with these redesigned mounting plates and black maker slides, and the Chrome X-Carve logo is a nice touch. Also, these self-tapping screws make it much easier to assemble than the previous model. The X-Carve also has a redesigned Z-axis assembly, a new spindle, and all the wires get connected to a central power supply. So let's take a closer look at each of these. This assembly is more solid and has a lower profile than the Shape Oko 2. The X-axis motor is back here. The Z-axis motor is here with pulleys and a belt that drive the Acme threaded rod that raises and lowers the spindle. Uh, this area had a lot fewer parts and was much easier to put together, so it was a major improvement. Here's the new spindle mount and spindle, and the spindle is basically a small router, and this one holds an eighth inch bit, but you can buy a collet adapter that will hold a quarter inch bit. And this is a big improvement over the rotary tool that was in the previous model. All of the cabling for the motors, the spindle, and the limit switches are routed through the drag chains and they exit out here. And from this point, I've got them running down to the central power supply. And I built this little carriage here to hold the power supply so that I can fold up my table. Uh, let me pull this out so I can show you what it looks like. All of the wiring for the X-Carve gets routed to this central unit. The wires are color-coded and the instructions are really good at showing you where to connect everything. You can see there's connections on the front and the side and the back. And to me, this is one area that could really use some cosmetic enhancements. I'm probably going to buy some connectors and reroute these wires and kind of clean all this up maybe build an enclosure for it just to make it look a little better. But a couple of key things here. Here's the USB output that goes to your computer. Uh, this is the uh, power cable. Here's the on-off switch for the power supply. And here's the on-off switch that turns on the spindle. This is one of the limit switches. And these do require that you do some soldering here at the switch and at the other end of these wires where they connect to the power supply. And these switches are used to home the machine to a home position and they can also be used to uh, stop the machine as it gets closer to the end of the rail so that when it hits the switch it stops the machine so it doesn't get damaged. This is the limit switch for the Z-axis and these are kind of delicate so you want to handle them carefully and you can probably tell that I accidentally broke this one, but that's okay. I can order another one for a couple of bucks from Invitables.com. Now, anybody with a CNC machine will tell you that one of the first things you figure out how to do pretty quickly is attach some sort of dust collection so you're not chasing the machine around with the vacuum cleaner. Now, I'm using this CPAP hose that uh, just happens to connect nicely to my shop vac hose and it's flexible enough so that I can zip tie it to the drag chain and it's connected here to the spindle mount uh, in the pre-drilled holes with M4 screws and using this cable clamp that I bought from the big box store and it's a little loose so that I can move it and adjust it how I need to or if the spindle goes down into the wood 
it will actually, you know, flex and move up if it needs to. So I'm real happy with how this works and how it looks as well. When I fold up the table, I don't want the X carve to fall on the floor. That would be a bad thing. So I've secured these blocks with three inch screws into the two by fours of the table and also use screws from underneath. And I've attached these tabs that hold the X carve down and they're against the side plate to keep it from moving from side to side. The front of the machine is held down with these two blocks and tabs. So since it's all secured, let's fold it up. I need to disconnect the vacuum hose and I need to unplug the vacuum, but I can leave all of this attached. And one important thing that I definitely don't want to forget is to slide the whole gantry back so it doesn't crash and slide this assembly over to one side so it's supported by one of the locks in the corner. Now, eventually, if I decide I fold this up a lot, I might add some supports for these rails so they don't sag over time from being upright. Uh, but I think I'm going to leave it down probably 95% of the time and ready to use. So, uh, but it's nice to have the option to fold it up if I need the space. It works! <laughs> Here's a closer look at the cage I built to hold the power supply while I fold it up. It's very open to allow for good airflow. Let's test the X carve by cutting a guitar shaped clock out of this piece of curly maple that is taped to a sacrificial board since we're cutting all the way through and this board is clamped down to the X carve. Here's the finished cutout from the X carve, and this is where the clock insert goes. I'm going to sand it up and put a Danish oil finish on it. But first, the easel software adds tabs so that the piece in the middle does not become loose and bounce around against the bit. So all you need to do is take a chisel and just kind of carve those off and break the piece loose from the rest of the wood. Here's the finished guitar clock, 
and the X-Carve did a fine job of cutting this out for me. <laughs> All I had to do is sand the edges, apply a finish, and put in the clock insert. And I can hang this on the wall or set it on a desk. These clock inserts are available at hobby shops or you can order them online. If you'd like to make one of these yourself, visit my website at thecarmichaelworkshop.com where I'll provide the link to my easel project if you have an X-Carve. Or if not, I'll provide a link to a PDF template that you can download if you'd like to make one of these with your bandsaw or scroll saw. Uh, you just have to have like a large Forstner bit to cut the recess for the clock. Also, I'm going to make some extras of these and put them over on my Etsy store. So check the description below for a link to that. If you'd like to head over there and see what I've got and see if you'd like to order something to support me and my shop. I'd like to thank Inventables for sending me the X card. I really appreciate it and I'll put it to good use. I can't wait to come up with some more projects for it. Also, if you'd like to find out some more information, visit them at inventables.com they have a great website with a nice users forum, and you can even try out their free easel software to see what it's like to design something for the X car. And if you have any questions or comments for me, just leave them below in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.